In this video, we're going to be learning about stoichiometry, which is arguably the most important concept when it comes to calculating measurements in chemistry. Stoichiometry is the calculation of how much reactant we need in order to produce a specific number of products, or how much products we can produce if given a specific quantity of reactants. It takes advantage of the law of conservation of matter, which simply states that matter can neither be created nor can it be destroyed. What this means is that if you add up the total of all of the reactants that you had, this total must equal the amount of products that you produce simply because matter cannot be created or destroyed, and taking advantage of moles, molar mass, and molar volume, the calculations become rather intuitive. If we take a look at this example calculation here, we are told that we start with 9.45 grams of AuCl3, gold 3 chloride, and we want to know based on this equation here, and based on the molar mass of AuCl3, how many grams of gold can we produce from this decomposition reaction? Well, we know from molar mass that we cannot compare the mass of AuCl3 and the mass of Au directly with each other because the molar masses are different. However, if we were to convert this measurement into moles using the molar mass, the moles we could compare directly with each other. So let's look up the molar mass values on the periodic table. We can see here that chlorine has a molar mass of 35.45 and gold has a molar mass of 196.97. So if we do the molar mass calculation here, the second number that I'm adding is 35.45 times 3 because again we have three chlorine atoms as part of AuCl3. If you do that, this number comes to 106.35. And if we do some fairly quick arithmetic, we can find the molar mass of AuCl3 as being 303.32 grams per mole. And this conversion factor here allows us to find the number of moles of AuCl3. However, the question is not asking for the moles of AuCl3, it's asking for the number of grams of gold which means we need another conversion factor that we've never used before that converts one compound or element, one reactant or product, into another reactant or product. So the way that this conversion factor works is based on our equation, we need two molecules of AuCl3, and if we do that in a decomposition reaction, it will give us two atoms of gold. Now, functionally, this co uh, conversion factor doesn't actually change the number because 2 divided by 2 is 1, and multiplying anything by 1 gives you itself. However, what it shows is that we are now looking at a different compound within the reaction. We are looking at the moles of gold rather than the moles of of gold 3 chloride, and remember that this fraction will not always be equal to 1. So now that we have moles of gold, how do we calculate what the mass of this many moles is? Well, again, we know the molar mass of gold right here, so all we would need to do is multiply this by the molar mass of gold, 196.97 grams per 1 mole. We see that moles cancel itself out. And that leaves us with the mass of gold that we produce. If you put this into your calculator, this number comes to approximately 6.14 grams of gold, again rounded to three significant digits. The next part involves the calculation of chlorine, which we know is a gas at room temperature. Since we don't measure the masses of gas directly, we can calculate what the volume of this gas would be at standard temperature and pressure. Now the good news is the first part of our calculation is exactly the same because we start with the same starting measurement of AuCl3, which we would then need to convert into moles so that we can compare the quantities directly with each other, so let's divide by the molar mass in order to give us the moles of AuCl3 again. 
Now here is where we see the this conversion factor working a little bit differently. So again, our question is asking for how much Cl2 we produce and not how much AuCl3 we produce. And we know that this reaction requires two molecules of AuCl3 for which we get three chlorine gas molecules out. So we see that this reactant and product conversion factor is not always equal to one. These fractions depend on how many of each chemical we have within the equation. So from this conversion factor, we know that we will be looking at moles of Cl2, but remember that the question asked for how many liters of Cl2 we would produce at standard temperature and pressure. And since we know that one mole of any gas at standard temperature and pressure is equal to 22.4 liters, we have just found our final conversion factor. If you put this into your calculator and round to three significant digits, this comes to approximately 1.05 liters of chlorine gas that is produced. We'll try one more example, at least the part A here, to deal with a reaction that is only involving gases. So in this situation, we're told that we have 55.75 liters of hydrogen gas, and we're wondering how many liters of ammonia we can produce, assuming that we're at standard temperature and pressure. Now from this, if we're working directly with gases and there is no environmental change, we can see a little bit of a shortcut that creeps in here. So remember, with any conversion question like this, it isn't always useful to compare between measured quantities in liters. The first step is almost always going to be converting to moles. So again, we remember that when we're at standard temperature and pressure, one mole of every gas is 22.4 liters, and that allows us to find how many moles of hydrogen we have. Now again, here is our reactant and product conversion factor. We know that we're not looking for hydrogen as our final answer. We want to know how much NH3 we would have. So since we don't care about hydrogen, that goes in the denominator to cancel, and NH3 goes in our numerator because that's what we want. And from our reaction, we're told that we need three hydrogen in order to produce 2NH4, and from there we have just figured out the moles of NH4 that we would produce. Finally, we're told that we will need to find the volume of NH4 at standard temperature and pressure, which means that we can simply multiply by 22.4 liters per one mole in order to figure out the volume of NH4 that we would produce. So moles cancel, and if you put this into your calculator with four significant digits, this comes to 37.16 liters of NH3 that is produced. Now you have to be careful about this because even though our starting measurement is in four significant digits, for reasons that we'll look at in the gas laws unit, 22.4 is actually a rounded answer to three significant digits, and because this answer is actually a rounded measurement, that means our final answer needs to be in three significant digits rather than four, so we can round this again to 37.2 liters of NH3. Before the next video, you can try the part B to this question here, which has a little bit of a trick to it because, again, it gives you a mass measurement in a measure or in a unit that is not the same as on the periodic table. And sometimes you will get questions that involve extraneous conversion factors like this. But as long as you understand how to use this reactant and product conversion factor here, that's the only real difference between regular mole calculations and stoichiometry.